Trees Economic Development Agency or Development Cooperation Agency rather and as well as being on the board of the subcommittee of the Thailand Creative and Design Centre. Ladies and gentlemen, I give you Dr. Borameti Vimon Siri. Good afternoon, uh, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, welcome to the afternoon session on creative infrastructure, a role of research. As we are uh, well aware, the issue of creative economy increasingly gained high attention among business sector, academician and government agency and is addressed as a key economic development agenda in various countries, including in Thailand, our current national economic and social impact also give a high priority to the creative economy development as one of the key strategies in the plan. Besides the private sector and government agency, we uh, cannot uh, refuse that the role of university in supporting creative economy development, especially in human resource development and R&D to serve creative industry is very important. So today is our great honor to have an opportunity to listen to the viewpoint of three highly distinguished speakers who have been involved in the promotion of R&D and innovation in various industries, particularly creative sector for many years. The first speaker on the, my left is Dr. Pichet Nurong Kawe, Secretary General of the National Science Association and Innovation He has a strong background in science and technology as well as public policy and management. He is renowned among academicians and policy makers in uh, science and technology development policy field. Dr. Pichet was the first director of the National Information Technology Committee Secretariat, the Knowledge uh, Network Institution of Thailand, and the uh, e-commerce resource center. The second uh, speaker next to Dr. Pichet is uh, Dr. Thanit Jang Thawon, intellectual property specialist at the National Center for Genetic Engineering and Biotechnology, or the so-called InShot Biotech. He is one of the key persons in Thailand to promote Thai students and entrepreneurs in the IT competitive uh, advantage. Our uh, third uh, speaker, the only uh, lady in the panel, is uh, Miss Nalina Lee Sawat. She is professional in the field of fine arts and media and has many experience in UK and Thailand. She is now the head of the department multimedia design at Silvacon University International College. Her interest at present is to integrate knowledge of arts, design and media research with ASEAN culture and heritage. I would uh, like to inform the speaker that uh, we have quite a limitation of time, so we will have uh, 15 minutes for each uh, presentation. And uh, afterward, we will uh, give the rest uh, 15 minutes to, of our time in this session to uh, the floor and uh, to understand to share with you and uh, to make uh, session uh, efficient uh, in the Q&A session, and, uh, we also have to uh, keep a uh, strict in the time slot. I would like to uh, request uh, 
pleasure to be the uh, first uh, speaker to share this view about the role of the university to promote R&D in the creative sector and direction towards developing R&D infrastructure and capability for enhancing creative economy. Please, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chair, the forum committee. Good afternoon, uh, distinguished participants, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, given that I'm restricted to 15 minutes uh, with a lot of slides, uh, I better uh, go straight to what I have prepared for you. Uh, in my role, uh, we are policy makers on the development of science, technology, and innovation in Thailand. Uh, so I would like to spend these 15 minutes uh, sharing with you uh, some of which may be directly uh, engaged with the creative economy. Uh, some may be indirect. Uh, but overall, we want to see that uh, the country and move forward uh, with the support of uh, science, technology, and inno innovation in, in, in uh, a perspective that has a wide coverage. Uh, as you know, we are going through uh, a lot of challenges. Uh, I'm not talking about the traffic that we will be facing soon, uh, but uh, locally and globally, we are foreseeing a lot of changes. Uh, in science and technology, we uh, have witnessed uh, a number of uh, very, very uh, far-reaching uh, activities, such as uh, what uh, lately, you know, the, the landing of the Curiosity, uh, the landing of Curiosity in Mars, uh, as well as the Higgs boson uh, discovery at the CERN in uh, Switzerland. Uh, we also witnessed the growth in population uh, and that is quite apparent that we have reached already 7 billion people and in a number of uh, 40, 50 years we will reach uh, 9 billion. Uh, those, those are nice numbers but uh, what follows is a shortage of food, shortage of energy and shortage of water. That's quite a challenge for humankind. Uh, and as a result, uh, many countries, Thailand included, uh, will have to deal with uh, poverty, uh, with hunger, uh, and uh, with uh, land use, for instance. Even the design capability in manufacturing is something that uh, we are dealing with. And this is, uh, I'm sure, quite uh, in included in the creative uh, area. Uh, I think the 15 minute time frame is really, really uh, uh, getting on me. Uh, okay, let me highlight uh, another example to you. Uh, we think that uh, today uh, it's essential for the linkage between university uh, and the private sector, uh, partly because uh, of different incentives in each part or in each party. Uh, we are now developing a policy so that uh, university professors uh, in the public uh, sector uh, can be uh, allowed uh, to work full-time for the private sector for uh, uh, a period of time, uh, not too short, uh, for example, one to two years, uh, so that uh, the knowledge transfer can be realized uh, to the commercialization end, rather than uh, for the fundamental research to sit on the shelf and uh, gain uh, nothing for the economy. Uh, this is uh, one of the examples that uh, we are trying to move ahead. Uh, another example on the human resource side, uh, we have been experimenting on uh, vocational education uh, in in a new paradigm, uh, we have experimented with uh, one vocational school in the, in, in the East, Chonburi, uh, which is located in the industrial estate. Uh, and we experimented uh, through the fact that we changed the whole curriculum so that it would become a, a, a project-based learning. Uh, we get uh, cooperation from university professors from many universities to help train the vocational
educational teachers uh, who, 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 who need a lot of training. And we uh, try to encourage students to use, make use of the factories in the area as the uh, live uh, laboratories. It has been quite successful in that uh, all the uh, 30 students per class has come out uh, very strong. Uh, and uh, we think that uh, we can extend this uh, to other regions of the country. Uh, lastly, uh, I would say that creative economy also hints upon the, the fact that we have to uh, deal with the intellectual property issue, uh, which is a tough issue in many respects. Uh, at the moment, we are trying to uh, propose a, a comprehensive policy uh, so that the IP uh, management system in, in overall uh, can be taken care of, consisting of a clear policy on, on the ownership issue, uh, especially of projects uh, or programs that uh, have been funded by the government. How we can translate those funding into commercialization, uh, given the fact that uh, the government alone uh, with the the ownership of the IP and cannot make use of them uh, into, into commercialization. We also want to re, uh, see that uh, there's a reform of the registration system so that it would be more, uh, more uh, efficient. Uh, apart from that, uh, it's also essential that we look into the financial and tax incentive system so that there will be more intellectual property creation. And lastly, uh, there's a need. Uh, since many universities in Thailand have been engaging in uh, IP-related activities, such as uh, uh, creating a university uh, uh, business uh, incubation unit, uh, having a technology licensing office, uh, all of these uh, need to be strengthened uh, so that the university can pass on the knowledge into commercialization, whether they do it themselves or they cooperate with the private sector or entrepreneurs who are interested to make use of the intellectual property. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I guess my time's up. Thank you very much for your patience. Thank you very much. And uh, next, uh, I'm sure uh, Dr. Tanit will have some more to add, especially things, uh, how we protect and uh, make use of the Thank you, Chair. Uh, good afternoon, everybody here. And I think this is my most challenging year to, to speak here today. I think for I probably for three weeks, like a speaking after this lunch. I think this is very very hard. And speaking after the party chair, you know everything. This is even harder. And I think speaking within 15 minutes, this is the hardest thing in my life. Um, I have to say that I'm very short-sighted, so I can't see any signal of any sign. So you have to remind me, Mr. Chair. So uh, I think uh, when uh, I got a phone call from the organizer that uh, wanted me to speak on this subject, so what I have this picture in my mind, like uh, these three issues. We have like creative economy, we have research, and we have intellectual property because actually this is my backup. Uh, I got my PhD in intellectual property from, from the UK. And the question is what are their connection? These three issues, intellectual property research and creative economy. So I have these two questions that just pop uh, into my head. What are the roles of research and IP in creative economy? and how do they stand in, in, in this creative economy. So by uh, understand, uh, try to understand all these issues, so I have to get into the definition of creative economy, which are lucky thanks to the, the IT uh, technology. So uh, I can get this information from, uh, actually this is from British Council, it's a creative city. And I think what is quite interesting is the, part, uh, the second paragraph of this uh, say that uh, at the heart of the creative economy are the culture, creative industry, 
that lie at the crossroads of art, culture, business, and technology. Of course, technology has to be researched for like uh, the common market. So she said that, and so that is quite uh, successful. And to solve the technical problem, uh, the political problem, she worked with a local university, and it can be very easy. It is very cheap and joint research with a lecturer from a local university just to identify the optimum uh, acidity or pH that uh, the color can, can be stable. With the result of that uh, joint research, so the quality of a uh, product just went up. And this is what just want to show that she just add more brand, like especially you see that uh, the, the the middle top one, uh, that is her brand Cheetah or Mad Cheetah, and especially how she spelled it in Thai, it's very different. She said that she wants to make it very different how to spell Cheetah, and like she said that this is like an old-fashioned way of spelling, and she add more design all this, and. Her product goes to Hollywood. <laughs> this, uh, you can see that uh, this is a uh, Hollywood film. Uh, the costume of this Hollywood film use her product. So, just want to compare the price uh, of the ordinary scarf, uh, which uh, you can pay just three to start or two hundred bucks for a piece of scarf, but her product. Ten times, two thousand baht for one piece, and I can guarantee that uh, the quality of the color and the texture is very good. So that is uh, the, the third one. I think I have to skip this because I think I have just one more minute. Uh, this is another case which is quite interesting. That uh, there are way to side uh, to side of coins. Uh, this is. Uh, happened to be uh, uh, a law case uh, in uh, Thai intellectual property case. Uh, I, I forgot to mention that I have been an associate judge uh, in this uh, court for over 10 years. And actually this case just uh, came to our panel. Uh, there was one industry that uh, came to the court and wanted to like uh, sue uh, his uh, competitor for copyright infringement. Uh, he claimed that uh, this design uh, was his copyright. When uh, we did the hearing, and like uh, we asked all the expert, uh, all the witness expert, it turned to be that this design is just really normal uh, design. Like it's a what we call it an uh, ancient design. I cannot remember the name of the of the, the design. But what he did just really slightly modify the design itself and claim copyright uh, protection for that. So this is another role of IP. I think, but actually, I think this is the the, uh, the misuse, the, the abuse of the IP system uh, in the creative economy. So. That's all. I think uh, I think I'm doing good in terms of time. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, the first minute is uh, clearly show us how the research, developments, and uh, intellectual property, creative creativity can uh, add value to the our product. It's, uh, so thank you for showing us the toy dress and uh, name and uh, everything. Uh, the next uh, speaker, Queen Nadina, uh, I think uh, she's the one who probably uh, involved in the everything we are talking about. I think uh, art, uh, culture, media, technology, teaching. So uh, please I think, uh, share us I think, some of your views. Thank you very much to give me a chance yeah, to share my experience in terms of how to start creative research within communication design content. But before I start my presentation, 
I just would like to mention briefly about the nature of uh, multimedia design course and um, my program at my university, Silver University, uh, International College. Um, just say briefly, um, the nature of our course is focusing on a wide range of media and communication design, let's say, including interactive design in, um, in um, digital illustration, yeah, and moving image in the blanket, animations, and uh, films. And in terms of history of Silicon University International College, it was started um, 10 years ago, I assume, and um, by the person Katia Pugh, yeah, she's a member of um, Silicon University. With a full of belief, she, is, right, she thought yeah, Silicon University, which is one of um, uh, leading the bottom design schools in, in Thailand, yeah, is ready to move forward to reach the international market. So um, she's looking for another partnership. Therefore, multimedia design program had a cooperation with the Birmingham City University in UK, and um, we need to deliver our course similar to the UK education. In that sense, come back to the teaching and learning methodology, you know, you know, because we need to teach in, in both sides, yeah, but fully teaching in English, but um, Silicon University will be a course to, for three years, and Birmingham City University will take over for another year. So we need to create some sort of curriculum which is can match perfectly and internationally in terms of research and that as well. Because in UK, um, mostly art and design universities or school or colleges weren't just focused only on the practical works but also the research as well. But back to us as education um, educators, <laughs> so we need to consider ourselves to develop our professions, let's say, to be um, the same standard uh, with the British educators, which is we've been um, so grateful. Birmingham City University always support us. We are train us with the research development under the staff development, let's say, and um, teach a lot of creative research so far. So, however, even though we are quite have we have quite solid aim to move forward for the creative research, there are um, two main factors which is uh, linked to the Thailand's new uh, directions of economics. I have selected only two measures of that. Yeah, one is the creative economics policy, which is in our um, program. We just would like to focus on. Heritage, cultural heritage, yeah, and the media. And number two, Asian economic community. The reason why we're sitting today, yeah, which is I believe in Thailand is ready to move forward next year, and that shape our new direction of education, also the new direction of the research. Ha, huh, big question for us. This is the case studies for um for educator like us. We sit down and think. How we can create a creative research, which is this combination between creative works and research methodology in um, the content of digital communication design. And that needs to um, respond to how we can produce creative research, which is can respond to the creative economics policy and AECM. Next one is basically is my own research, which is under the focus at the moment, is for creating different kinds of multimedia, including documentaries, um, to educate Thai heritage and history. This can be broadcast on the televisions and being um, being downloaded on the ebook, and maybe you can see it on the website, and also on DVD, and so on. So this kind of possibilities um, is our. Um, plan at the moment. So for the summary, the creative research may be started to form the creative work, yeah, and plus for us, our creative research is going to highlight on the interpretations between um, the creative work and the content of art and design, plus economics, politics, history, technology, science, and plus in social and cultural items, and eco-smart.
For those logo of smile, I will leave it with you guys to imagine what that smile means. I would like to open your creativities today, so I want to summarize what it is and with that smile. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Queen Navin, and uh, before open the uh, floor for the Q&A, uh, Dr. Pichet uh, requests additional one minute for something he thinks that will be useful for us. So uh, I'll give you strictly one minute. Thank you, Mr. Chair. You are so kind. Uh, I just want to, since this is an uh, ASEAN uh, forum, uh, maybe it's useful uh, to uh, inform you about uh, the result of the ministerial meeting uh, on uh, science, technology, and innovation, uh, so that uh, maybe you can make use. Uh, it's another one, it's the first one. Uh, it's a result of uh, a, a two-day uh, intensive uh, meeting uh, two years ago in Gabi uh, to redirect uh, the role of science, technology, and innovation in the ASEAN area. And uh, we have come to a conclusion, uh, and it's only one page, uh, so, so it, it will... Uh, Be very short. Okay. Okay. This is called the Grubby Initiative, and it's the sort of a roadmap uh, for ASEAN to move ahead. Uh, uh, especially uh, once uh, the year 2015 has arrived, uh, you you can just look at the red band uh, first. Uh, we have agreed among ten countries. Uh, that we will be focusing on eight thematic areas uh, covering the ASEAN innovation for global market, and this is more trade and industry, uh, digital economy, uh, including new media and social network, uh, green technology, uh, food security, energy security, water resource management, uh, it's your area, biodiversity for health and wealth, and last but not least, uh, science and innovation for life. Uh, so, so this is the, the eight themes that the ASEAN will work together uh, under, under the Science Technology Ministerial. Uh, in conclusion, let me also say that uh, from the sense that I have uh, of all 10 countries uh, at the moment, uh, we feel that uh, if you look at the, the paradigm shift uh, layer, we feel that ASEAN uh, currently is facing uh, a number of challenges together. Uh, and this can be highlighted by the fact that uh, our concerns uh, incorporate uh, the future of our youth, and in particular, the innovation in our youth. That's one. Our concern with the bottom of the pyramid. So in all that we are doing, we will be uh, not forgetting that uh, there's still another side of uh, the coin, uh, especially the, uh, the disadvantage uh, that we have to uh, take care of. Uh, we also uh, concerned that for uh, the green society, as much as the science and culturation, and last but not least, uh, the cooperation between the public and the private sector. Thank you very much. Thank you. So uh, we, we have a couple of minutes uh, left for uh, question or comment from the floor. So if uh, anyone you uh, have comment or question, you uh, may take this uh, opportunity. And, uh, please be grateful uh, also with your question and comment. Yes, the gentleman at the back. Yes. Thank you very much. My name is Chelyo Manila. I'm former director of the institution of promotion of teaching science and technology and as a trained physicist. 
uh, I have to say that the state of uh, Thai sign technological development is the best state. Compared to Japan, Korea, China, Taiwan, and perhaps Malaysia, Malaysia and Vietnam too perhaps. I don't know, I'm not, I'm not sure about this. The question is why? Why? Although we all have a head start 50 years ago, we had a very good sufficiency compared to Korea. But now we are not going anywhere. I think part of this, there are, there are many, many reasons, I think, but personally, if I, if I may make a point. Sometimes, first, yeah, I should say, sometimes uh, people hire only give up on science. Yeah, yeah, no good. We can't compete in science and technology. But yes, I think it's wrong. It's wrong. I, I'm the first director who said I student to participate in science and mathematics and science only. The result is very, very sad in the beginning. But now we are formidable force for formidable participants in 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 any Olympic event. <coughs> I try to stretch out. First, uh, I think in Thailand there's a misconception of science. I think science users. There are many people, very good people, who told me, well, study physics, chemistry, biology is useless. I think it's wrong. They don't know that the people who put the world into the age of information is the physicist. If I can mention his name, is the uh, uh, Chocolate, William Chocolate, who used to work at Bell Telephone Company. And he's, he, in, the, in the process of his work, he finds it. The semiconductor is working on has very, very uh, has potential of a traffic value. So he moved to California to set up what was known as Silicon Valley. Many countries have Silicon Valley. I think Sil uh, Malaysia also has Sil Silicon Valley to export the, uh, I think, uh, semiconductors, or not semiconductors. Secondly, I think. That's an indicator of a science development. I think that in USA and, and Japan, they have a laws to deduct, I think, maybe wrong, two or three percent from the net profit of the private organization and put a to, to research organization. I don't think Thailand has such a law. I think it's very good to, to introduce such a law because Thai researcher must be well off. They must not allow to be stunned. They have to work. They have to work. We well off. If you look in Thailand, there's a specialty in poor. I don't know. I, I maybe, maybe high, you know. Um, <coughs> but yeah, that's my point. Uh, if, if, if I may have a response from, 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 from the panel. Thank you very much. I, I, I will uh, collect maybe the one or two more questions if uh, there are any. Yes, please. Uh, I'm Babiono from Indonesia. I just would like uh, to ask, uh, you earlier you said that uh, you have uh, developed a vocational school and you train your teachers. Uh, the teachers trained by university professors. Uh, may I know in what field of study and of or specialization? Because uh, in my experience in Indonesia, uh, well, uh, with all my respect to my colleagues, university professors, they are very far away from vocational schools. And uh, uh, I'm not sure that uh, they, they are able in Indonesia, I mean, they are able to teach the vocational teachers. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, any more comments? If uh, there's no more comments, then uh, anyone in the panel is uh, free to uh, respond. Uh, <coughs> Uh, in response to the first gentleman, uh, 
ask for the contribution of the of the maybe private sector in research and development. Actually, in Thailand, uh, we have in place the the, the rule uh, that uh, public enterprise in Thailand uh, should be spending three uh, percent of their profit on research and development. Uh, however, after uh, some scrutiny, we found that uh, a lot of them uh, have not been using those amounts or have been under uh, utilizing those amounts, uh, some of which uh, have been uh, used uh, but not for the purpose of research. So now uh, we are trying to inform uh, and make known to the executives of those public enterprises that uh, it's better for the company in the long run uh, to invest in knowledge uh, so that they can be more innovative and uh, some of the pub major public companies are uh, committing to do so. Uh, lately, the Botato or PTT, the Petroleum Company of Thailand. Uh, as for the science education, uh, you're right, uh, students nowadays uh, uh, have been avoiding uh, a lot of science uh, for many reasons. Uh, I think we have to look at the whole value, ch value chain of science education uh, in, in the country. Uh, starting from science education in primary school. Uh, it's no use for us in university to, to continue complaining that uh, our inputs are too weak uh, and it takes a lot of time to um, upgrade them before they can get into the freshman year effectively. Uh, because the grassroots of the problem uh, stands not, not in the university but from the primary and secondary school education. Uh, here in Thailand, the, the two things that we need to do, at least, is to change the way we teach uh, by not teaching. Uh, in science, uh, nowadays we, we teach students uh, through chalk and board, and then they, they just use their memory. Uh, as a result, they don't know what they are uh, uh, learning. Uh, we, we need to uh, use something like inquiry-based learning, for example. Uh, for science teaching, starting from uh, grade one up, uh, for instance. In secondary school, uh, as well as in uh, university level, we also need to get them involved not only in classroom teaching, but also in work integrated learning. Uh, we need to uh, get them to see how uh, the factory works. Uh, we need to get them to see how business works. Uh, so that uh, they know what, what, they, what they like or they know what texture uh, the future career is, is all about. Uh, we, we are very detached now, the uh, education and profession, very detached. Uh, we may have uh, curriculum counseling in, in school or in university, but we do not have career counseling in school or university. This is some of the things that we need to address. Uh, as for the second question from uh, our colleague from Indonesia, uh, the, the experiment uh, in the vocational school uh, at the moment, uh, uh, we, we understand uh, uh, well that uh, there's a distinction between university people and, uh, and how they are connected to the real world. Uh, but uh, the philosophy of this kind of school, we do not just want the, the vocational students to, to, to be a technician, but we want them to have a, a, a good grasp of basic science in their technical work also, so that they can at least roughly understand what they are doing. And then in the future, they can be a quality technician, uh, knowing how to adjust, uh, knowing how to develop uh, in the production line that they have to handle. And, uh, and so that's why we call it a school, a science-based vocational school, rather than just vocational school. Uh, we know that there's a gap between university professor and uh, the, the, the uh, uh, dirty hand type of <laughs> work. You know, but at least they can keep basic. And at the same time, they can also learn from the executive to the real world. Uh, but uh, the philosophy of this kind of school, we do not just 
want this, the vocational students to, to, to be a technician, but we want them to have a, a, a good grasp of basic science in their technical work also, so that they can at least roughly understand what they are doing. And then in the future, they can be a quality technician, uh, knowing how to adjust, uh, knowing how to develop uh, in the production line that they have to handle. And, uh, and so that's why we call it a school, a science-based vocational school, rather than just vocational school. Uh, we know that there's a gap between university professor and uh, the, the, the uh, uh, dirty hand type of <laughs> work, you know, but at least they can give basic, and at the same time, they can also learn from their experience in the vocational education. And we, we want to uh, group them up to be sort of a cadet, you know, uh, so that they can help or assist the vocational education because they are stronger than the vocational population. Thank you very much. Thank you, uh, ladies and gentlemen. We ran out of time, uh, but I think we have a fruitful and uh, interesting session. So I would like to uh, thank all the speakers for uh, your views and uh, presentation, and also uh, all the for your attention. Thank you.